Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. Today we'll be covering a topic that should be interesting to you if you've ever had trouble turning on your computer. And that's not to say you can't find the power switch, it means if there's something wrong with it. We call it a no post, and that's when you turn on the computer and all you see is a blank screen, you don't get any sort of video display. So today I'll be using my test bed PC here, which is set up on an open bench, to demonstrate some of the troubleshooting steps that you can do before you contact a technician or before you start spending money replacing hardware to see if you can get your PC back up and running. So the first steps that you can do do not involve opening up your PC. The first thing, very first thing, most common mistake you want to check is that the switch at the back of your power supply is set to on and you do have a power plug plugged into it, okay? Number two, most common mistake, make sure you have a video cable plugged into the back of your video card, or if you don't have one, it would be plugged into the back of your onboard video and that the screws are tightened all the way. Now another common mistake, especially with a new system that you're assembling yourself, is picking a CPU that isn't compatible. So what you'll need to do is go to the manufacturer website, so that's ASUS, Gigabyte, Intel, whoever makes your motherboard, and check the CPU compatibility list to make sure that your CPU is compatible. One other very common cause of a no post scenario is the power connector has been wiggled loose or wasn't connected properly. So, first of all, you've got two connectors that go into your motherboard. One is either a four pin or an eight pin P4 or EPS connector. Usually up in the top left of the board, you wanna make sure that's in until it clicks. The second one is a 20 pin or 24 pin connector, usually up on the top right hand edge, and you wanna make sure that that one's in all the way as well. Now one way you can tell really quickly if your board is getting power is if you turn on the power supply, you can see that little light there flick on and off, depending whether the power supply is on or off. That means your board has power at the very least. Now, it's not the only thing that needs an additional power connector. Many modern video cards, so if you're upgrading your video card, need a six pin or eight pin PCI Express connector, or even two. Make sure that you've got those plugged in properly all the way, or you may not get a video display. Now a lot of the time when you call into motherboard tech support, one of the things they'll ask you to do, and this is particularly important if you're overclocking or changing any settings on your motherboard, is to clear the BIOS or clear the CMOS. So I'm gonna show you how to do this on an Intel board. Now if I can get the cameraman to zoom in, basically you wanna find the BIOS config or CMOS or clear CMOS jumper and you pick up the jumper while the computer is powered off and the power supply is powered off move it over to the other two pins for one second, and then move it back onto the original pins that it was situated on. Now with a gigabyte board, it is a slightly different procedure because a gigabyte board only has two pins there. So I'm gonna simulate that, and you will have to either take a jumper or some other conductive material like a screwdriver and hold it to connect those two pins together for a second while the board is powered off with the power supply unplugged or switched off. At every step in the troubleshooting process, you are going to want to check whether the system is now functioning or not. So you're not always gonna be working in a case because sometimes the case itself can be what causes the system not to post. Because if it's shorting out on the case, that can mean that, oh, okay, well, hey, I'm not gonna work anymore. So a lot of the time you'll take it out, put it on a motherboard box or another non-statically, non-electrically conductive surface and try it that way. Now, some motherboards have an onboard power switch, that's very handy, and it allows you to do it easily. While others, you will need to connect manually the two pins for the power switch in order to get the system to start. So we are going to do that now and we're going to find out potentially what's wrong with the system. So we have a beep code. What that means is A, we have power to our motherboard and B, we have some kind of response from it. So usually what that means is that the problem lies somewhere else. So we're gonna move on to the memory. One other thing that's relatively easy to check and can happen with a system, whether it's new or old, is a defective memory stick or slot. So one thing that you wanna do is start removing memory. So if your system will boot with just one stick of RAM, you wanna try that. So you remove the clips on either sides of the RAM module, remove one module, in this case we have two in the system, careful to handle it only by the edges, and see if the system will boot up with just one RAM stick. Try that stick in another slot, and then if it still doesn't work, try swapping the two RAM sticks for each other to see if maybe the one you left in was the defective module. 
So as the next step in our troubleshooting guide, we removed one of the sticks of memory and we're going to find out if the system will post now. So we're going to connect our little jumpers, get the system to start up here and no beep code this time. So what that means to me is A, we're getting a response from the motherboard because it says, oh, hey, there's something wrong. And then now it's not saying there's anything wrong, but we still don't have any video output. So no beep code means to me that this RAM module is probably good. So we're gonna move on to the next step, which would be the video card. So while it's not nearly as simple as checking the video cable, sometimes the problem with the video card is as simple as reseeding it. So what you need to do is release the PCI Express clip. There are a few different mechanisms for this. Consult your manual if you're not sure. Release the PCI Express clip, pull the card out of the slot, handling it only by the edges. So we're just gonna, ah, just using gentle force to pull it out. Double check, I mean, make sure there's no damage to the connectors or to the slot itself and then firmly reseat the card back into the slot, making sure that the lock re-engages. Now, it never hurts if you have an SLI or a Crossfire motherboard to try the card in a different slot while you're at it because sometimes it's not the card itself that's dead, sometimes it's the PCI Express slot. So we reseated our video card and we're gonna try again. We're jumpering our two pins and I'm using a screwdriver for that. You can use any electrical thing as long as it will. Okay, and the fan stops spinning. It does not post. So the last thing we're gonna do, and I actually know what's wrong with this system, is we are going to swap the video card for a different one. So we're turning off the power supply and we'll put in a completely different video card. Here it is, the acid test, whether it will actually work or who knows, maybe I broke it while I was uh, doing all of this to it. Here we go. I am jumpering the switch and potentially if this new video card works, we are going to see a display from the computer on the tech tip screen behind me. There you have it. We have troubleshot our scenario here, which involved a defective RAM stick. So we had to remove the defective module until we didn't hear any beep codes from the motherboard. And then we also had a defective video card. So we had to replace the original video card we were using with another one that does work. Thank you for checking out NCIX Tech Tips on troubleshooting your PC. So now what we tried is removing a stick of memory and we're gonna try and boot the system up again. Now, if the switch was powered on at the back, then that would work, but it isn't, so. Yeah.